the nine NFL players under the most pressure for the 2020 NFL season. Number nine on the list, Leonard Fournette. His fifth-year option was already declined by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Leonard Fournette has unbelievable talent. I've always argued that. The question is, does he get it? Does he want it? Remember, this was the fourth overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. The Jaguars picked him over Christian McCaffrey, over Patty Mahomes, over Deshaun Watson. They dangled him out there via trade, and nobody had any interest. We've seen him star for key games for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We've seen him dominate. We know there's talent. Leonard Fournette is only playing for his not only Jacksonville future, his NFL career. Number eight, how about Aaron Jones, the running back of the Green Bay Packers? I love this cat. 16 touchdowns on the ground last year, 19 overall touchdowns, but he's a free agent at the end of the campaign. And the Green Bay Packers drafted his replacement in the second round, and A.J. Dillon. Obviously, that didn't get the attention that Jordan Love did when the Packers picked him to eventually down the road to place Aaron Rodgers. But I don't think that Aaron Jones is going to be long for the world with the Green Bay Packers, and that that's a mistake. And then you start thinking about the history and precedent of running backs getting a chilly reception in terms of Financial guarantees on the open market, a pressure packed season for Aaron Jones, who wants to play well. Aaron Rodgers loves him, wants to win, and also wants to get paid, whether that's in Green Bay or most likely elsewhere. Number seven, T.Y. Hilton. I've always been a big fan of T.Y. Hilton, but he's coming off of an injury plague season. He did not produce like we're accustomed to seeing with the Indianapolis Colts. He's diminutive in stature, which has always been impressive how Hilton's been able to put up big-time numbers throughout his career, under six feet tall, weighing 183 pounds, and he's in a contract year. And you have to remember that Phillip Rivers doesn't have any rapport with T.Y. Hilton. They just drafted two offensive studs, one at receiver, Michael Pittman, and, of course, Jonathan Taylor at the running back position. So whether or not T.Y. Hilton gets that long-term commitment from Indianapolis Colts, it's a fair question. Whether or not he's going to be a coveted free agent with his height and his age, a lot of that is going to depend upon how he produces in 2020. Number six, one of my favorite players in the NFL, Von Miller. And don't misinterpret. I think Von Miller is a star. And I think last year, when you look at the sickly sack total on the screen, I think that is a blip as opposed to a trend. But Von Miller is due a ton of cash next year. And the Denver Broncos, even though I'm enamored with the upside of Drew Locke and the talent around him at the receiver position, the calling card for this football team needs to be defense. Von Miller needs to get back to his all-pro, sack the quarterback 16 or more times ways, or Von Miller is going to end up being an ex Denver Bronco. Number five, under the most pressure, Jimmy Garoppolo. And look, I love Jimmy G. I think the Niners can absolutely win a championship with Jimmy G. First three quarters of Super Bowl Sunday, they were in route. But Jimmy G missed a wide open Emmanuel Sanders, who it could have been a game-winning throw to win the Super Bowl. I argued Tom Brady. The 49ers should have signed him, would have been an upgrade. And listen, even in the two playoff games in the NFC, the divisional round and NFC title game, my guy Kyle Shanahan rightly ran the football before throwing it with Jimmy Garoppolo. How high is the upside? How high is the ceiling? These are fair questions. Niners, in my opinion, have the best roster in the NFL, 1 through 53. Are they going to be my Super Bowl pick? Nope. That comes down to the quarterback. A lot of pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo. Number four, Juju Smith-Schuster. Listen, Juju last year was dreadful. We could talk about injuries at quarterback. We could talk about Juju getting nicked. Any way you want to slice it, Juju Smith-Schuster was one of the most underachieving players in the NFL last year. Obviously, the Steelers had to let Antonio Brown go, but in terms of talent and a number one receiver, they thought they had the cats in Juju Smith-Schuster. He was a, a flop going from off-Broadway to Broadway. Juju's in a contract year. I'm on record saying he's going to produce and dominate. Did I mention he's a free agent playing for his NFL future and his future in Pittsburgh? 
pressure pack season for Juju. Number three, Patrick Peterson. You know I like the Cardinals to surprise people and make the playoffs this year. They're my Cinderella team in 2020. Now, we always talk about the offense, but part of my premise for Arizona, they have three dudes on defense. Chandler Jones, Isaiah Simmons, who they just drafted as a special talent, and Patrick Peterson. Patrick Peterson, to me, future Hall of Fame. That, of course, came into question and doubt when he was suspended six games last year after getting busted for testing positive for performance-enhancing drugs. You talk to cornerbacks, you talk to receivers in the NFL, they will still tell you. Patrick Peterson, one of the elite corners, if not the best in the business. No margin for error. He needs to get his name and his game back. And there's a lot of pressure on Patrick Peterson for this upcoming season. Number two, one of my favorite players in the NFL, we got to be honest here, Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack sacked the quarterback eight and a half times last year. Unacceptable. You realize when they traded for Khalil Mack, and I said they'll build a Khalil Mack statue outside the stadium in Chicago, thought it was one of the biggest ripoffs in the history of sports in terms of a trade. I'm sure Bears fans like me thought this team was going to be in the Super Bowl mix every single season Khalil Mack was playing football in Chicago. Two years in, they haven't won a playoff game. Now, obviously, we could get to the Eagles game two years ago in Cody Parkey. Khalil Mack, his first year was unbelievable. Last year, eight and a half sacks. A pedestrian player. If Khalil Mack is not in the same conversation as Aaron Donald for being an elite defensive ball player, then it's underachievement. This is year three. Now, I'm not pinning the failures in Chicago on Khalil Mack. Please don't misinterpret. Obviously, that's the awful quarterback position. Matt Nagy, much maligned. I still love Khalil Mack. Last year, did he make a play? And I'm exaggerating for a fact. Eight and a half sacks. Bears didn't make the playoffs. Did Khalil Mack make one play that made a difference in Chicago? He should double that total. Minimum of 16 sacks this upcoming season. They're paying him a lot of money. Khalil, get it done. Number one on the list, Cam Newton. Listen, Cam Newton, you've seen the stats all week long. We'll show them again. 0-8, last eight starts. Cam Newton is not the player that he was. Now, he has a great opportunity to go out there and prove me wrong. He's going up against Jared Stidham and Brian Hoyer to be the quarterback of the New England Patriots. If you can't beat out Jared Stidham at the quarterback position, pack it up, pack it in, let retirement begin. I'm sure there'll be no debates about the nine players under pressure, the most pressure for the 2020 NFL season.